All right, my friends. I've been thinking about this a little bit. This is the second Airbnb I'm renting. And I wanted to share tips and tricks regarding house rules, cleaning fees, what I learned, and uh, a story that might make your jaw drop. So last year, I uh, found a beautiful, brilliant house with the two stories I needed to visit. Um, Harrisburg and uh, fantastic house it might have been a three-story anyways I decided to get an Airbnb because I was traveling with a friend and I snore like a boar so I decided to you know go for the better place it had a cleaning fee so long story short I thought the cleaning fee covered some cleaning, but boy, was I wrong. I broke the house rules. The house rules were in a binder and it looked like, I don't know, the, the tax code. It was long, I'm telling you. This thing was like a whole binder. I tried calling the owner and I couldn't reach her. Uh, so in the end, when I'm checking out, checking out on time, I didn't understand the rules too well. I thought the cleaning fee covered, you know, cleaning up after the people up to a reasonable extent. So I did leave dishes. Yes, the dirt was kicked on, but I was actually using one dish to make breakfast the whole time. I made coffee in a regular coffee thing. I didn't know how to use the coffee maker. I didn't know how to use the dishwasher, so I didn't put any dishes in the dishwasher. And she also took some photographs of inside the toilet. And let me say, I left some gifts after flushing. And then the owner decided to wanted to charge me a hundred dollar cleaning fee. So in our correspondence, I was like, hey, cleaning fee back and forth. I'm like, what does the cleaning fee include? So she sends a cleaning a checklist that she gives to the cleaning woman. And it's like a multiple, and then you put it side by side with the house rules is the same exact checklist as the cleaning woman gets. So I'm like, fantastic. So the cleaning woman actually has all these responsibilities in the first place. And uh, making a longer story short, I wound up getting, maybe I left the negative feedback first, but it wasn't a positive spin. I said the, hard, the rules were hard to follow, but the house was beautiful, very well done, fantastic. And yeah, I... I I did left to leave a little bit of negativity in the review because the you know conversation left a little bit to be desired and to because I had a good time you know I left I enjoyed the stay um, I had a good time but I just didn't know I was gonna, she was gonna try to charge me an extra hundred dollars for a cleaning fee that I thought I already paid and for what I thought was a reasonable cleaning thing to do. And plus, I didn't use the whole house, all the bedrooms, just two of the bedrooms of the four, I think, they were in there. So, here's the deal. How to look at the cleaning fee. The cleaning fee is actually the cost of the house. When you're paying the cleaning fee... You're not paying a cleaning fee if um, the house rules say uh, wash the dishes, you know, clean up the things, take the trash outside. You're not paying the cleaning fee. You're paying the cleaning privilege fee to clean up after yourself because the house rules that you agreed to when you 
got the apartment or house or whatever property or place, you agree to them. So when you agree to the house rules, you agreed if it had the cleaning stuff in it. So this is the second house that I, I got that I didn't read the house rules, but it doesn't seem as stringent as the other one. But I have to warn you guys that if you wanna enjoy some lush, beautiful property, some like exotic places, like for example, this time, I wound up renting out a lake house, like right on the lake here in New York, beautiful views. It has a little pier thing you can walk off onto it. it has a little barbecue, like three bedrooms, can fit multiple people. There's no hotel that could compete with this. I mean, you get some crazy suites, but they're probably gonna be even more expensive. So don't consider the cleaning fee a cleaning fee unless the rules don't say like, all you have to do with anything past. So, so one of the things that, that I guess that's reasonable in this one, having read it, is that um, after any bed that you use, you throw the bed sheets onto the floor to get picked up and washed. So it's kind of good because so this way they know which bed that was slept in. I understand that. But then it also said things like, turn off some switch. And if you don't turn off the switch, it's gonna be a $225 charge, some sort of ice maker. I don't know. I feel like not even turning on the nice ice maker in the first place, but then it's part of the house rules to turn on the ice maker. Anyways, after my previous experience with the owner uh, renting of the house is I learned that if the, if the owner wants to put the, whatever the, the, the person po posted the thing, wants to put a house rule where you have to clean the house up and it becomes kind of like an extra profit margin for them that you believe you should have they should be more upfront about it understand this that that lady that i talked about previously so they what they also do you have to understand none of your trash is private don't expect any of your trash privacy what she found was when I visited a gentleman's club, uh, you had to check in your code something. I had to check something in and they gave you a ticket. I think you might've had to check in your cell phone. So I wound up losing this ticket and I wound up just, you know, they, they wound up giving me my cell phone back. But long story short, that lady finds it and says, I was really disturbed, right? Yes, I'm a man, I visited a gentleman's club. But to her to even mention in the message meant that none of, your, none of your garbage is private. Especially if you don't take it outside into the trash thing. So I've been thinking about the cleaning fee because it's part of my, you know, I am, I am going to an Airbnb in a couple days. I'm gonna have a great time. I'm gonna clean everything up to the best of my ability. Um, but you, you have to learn from the experiences. You have to learn how the game is played. I call it kind of like Airbnb staying etiquette. So house rules. So there's two opposing views of this. I understand both. So let's say you visit your grandma's house. Would you leave it trashed? I choose to disagree with that argument because if I said, hey grandma, would you mind if I paid you 150 bucks if you cleaned up the house after I stayed in it all weekend? I, I'm gonna be really tired after, I gotta go back to work on Monday, well, whatever the reason. You wind up paying for a certain thing. So you're not paying your grandma to clean up and she shouldn't have to clean up after you anyway. But then there's the, the, there's the viewpoint is that Hey, you charge a cleaning fee. Um, what, what you know? What does it include? The website doesn't doesn't show anything. I haven't found a single guide. 
And so I typed in cleaning fee, Airbnb cleaning fee keyword into YouTube. And uh, what I found is that it's, it gives more advice to owners, what kind of fee they should charge, things like this. And it was actually a professional cleaning woman. She pointed out a really good point that people want to be on a vacation and they don't want to be worried about cleaning up the like extra dishes. They want to enjoy their time. Yes, they might leave the place in a mess, but I'd rather pay a little bit extra and know that the cleaning fee, everything is taken care of. That, you know, I don't care if you like left the toilet seat up. I don't care if you uh, I would, like scrubbed inside the toilet, find the plunger. I don't know. I don't know what you're supposed to do. Um, I feel like that that's the way that it should be. That the cleaning fee should be like, okay, cleaning fee means reasonable fee to charge to bring it up to standard after the most things. So it should be like a very excessive thing. So another video I watched was sometimes in the house rules, they declare that they have um, uh, surveillance on the property. So one Airbnb owner, what he does is that if somebody, there, there's a big, a lot of people in the living room, let's say. Let's say it's a house for eight people, but these people throw a party. Apparently they install a wireless camera and they photograph the thing, photograph the party, and maybe even break it up after, and then submit the photography to the Airbnb to reimburse them because they put in the house rules that it's a policy for them to get paid uh, like $35 a person over 10 people that stay there. So if you're throwing a party, you multiply 35 by 30, you charge them an extra grand. Makes sense. So that becomes part of the house rules. So the house rules becomes kind of like a golden rule. But then if you don't wind up paying, so what might happen is that if you don't clean up after yourself well, the owner could actually photograph the object that you didn't clean up. Let's say like the dirty dishes in my case. Let's say how I didn't clean up after the flush. I don't know, maybe the toilet's broken. It should have like flushed everything down, but there was some residue left inside the toilet bowl. They might send you pictures of that. Why do they send pictures? It's because they need to prove this claim to the thing. And she was trying to say that actually the dish, because it was dirty, it was also ruined and it would cost her like $100 to replace or whatever. That's probably not gonna be able to salvage. So the person, we also have to understand this person comes from a context, they work for a, go for a government agency, they're used to making rules and creating rules. So be careful watching out for those. But what wound up happening is that I tried later, just yesterday or before yesterday, to put an offer in or to try to rent a cottage on another lake, probably the better lake. That was actually my first choice in the beginning. But the woman responded saying, I read the review about you and because of the past experience, I choose not to rent to you. So, if you want to keep maintaining um, the homes, I mean, being able to rent really awesome homes, you kind of have to follow the rules and you really can't do anything about it. You know, I may disagree with it, but this is why I'm making this video is because when I typed into YouTube, maybe it's a search engine algorithm thing because those were more reputable websites or people that talk about it a lot more as a business, things like that. They made like hundreds of videos or something about Airbnb. But with the cleaning fee, there's never been um, a guest's perspective. So I'm usually a very honorable and honest guy. But what I do find sometimes is that like, when people follow laws, rules, abidings, um, there's certain people that have this drive to control people, they kind of take advantage of that. And one of the things that I see is that it's best to actually say no when you can. So when that woman wanted to charge me the $100 cleaning fee on top of the 45 she charged, 
and that took all those pictures and tried to either shame me or blackmail me in regards to finding that uh, business card from the Gentleman's Club, which is a completely legal business. One of the sites to see, you could have been dragged in a party with other people and not wanting to go in there, but you did it for the company because some people may have a meeting, but she doesn't care about that. She just found that this man visited a gentleman's club and to her, it's a bad place. It's a, uh, it's, I don't know, maybe against women or I don't know. I don't know what it is, but these women, they get, they do get paid very well. So the, so the point becomes is that when I was renting this Airbnb out on the lakefront property, I decided like, Hey, what the heck this cleaning fee of like, I think it was 150 bucks, just the cost of the property. But it's a, it's a little bit misleading because think about it like this. If, because the property said 199 a night, oh, it looks fantastic. But then when you add the cleaning fee, it becomes more like 279. So it allows them to compete more in the search results because they look like they're cheaper and with a nice picture, it's fantastic. And with the cleaning fee, people might assume, but then on top of that, so you have to expect they're gonna go through your trash. That for example, one of the one of the rules in a house is no smoking. So watching the video about the cleaning fee, the guy talked about like how do you prove to Airbnb that somebody smoked in the house? Right? Or or on the property is that he, he said go through the people's trash and find some cigarette butts photograph it and uh, email it to airbnb and get paid right but you have to understand like well what if, what if the person is a smoker and they took a, took their cigarette outside with a good ashtray make sure to be clean about it put it out safely and things like this Unless you flush those cigarette butts down the toilet, they could have evidence against you. So, I guess don't necessarily expect privacy. I think they're supposed to tell you if they record you or things like that. But if you put in the rules like, hey, public areas are recorded. So let's say you rent out an apartment and you decide to run around butt naked in the living room, you don't have any reasonable expectation of privacy there. So they can't record, I guess, the toilet, that, that place, but if you thought you were privately running around na butt naked in an apartment you thought was all to yourself, that's not true, because they could record you. But I, I, have to, I have to go back to the original point. Why am I putting up with this? Why, why am I doing this? I still find it much better a much better experience in some ways if you want to enjoy that private life the experience the lifestyle the lifestyle of a home on the lake just think about it like this right owning the lake property it might cost hundreds of thousands of dollars i don't know maybe some properties could be millions i guess it depends but the point is this you got you got to put up a lot of money up front sometimes you got to fix it up sometimes i don't i don't know like a, a bunch of things think about the time and energy investment it took to get the property <laughs> and then and then you get to rent it out for a couple hundred dollars a day yeah there's a cleaning fee but it's not a cleaning fee it's part of the cost of the thing it is what it is and i guess these people there are business owners of the airbnbs that's what they try to do and Honestly, I actually had to delete that account which had the negative feedback because it actually blocked me from, from the thing. So I got to learn my lesson from that experience that it doesn't matter what I think, it's the house rules and you have to be on a watch out for yourself. Try to follow, follow the things because any little experience, they might send you a bill 
you argue with it on, on, on the principle, they might write a feedback about you. And they can't really write a feedback about them because if you write a feedback about them, they write a feedback about you. But they rented out that property 200 times and your feedback goes in the trash can. But you, being a renter, you usually don't even get a feedback about yourself. So you get the only negative feedback for that property. So it becomes kind of like a situation where you have to protect your feedback or guess reputation in the situation. And that's the rule of the game. It is what it is. I may not agree with it. I, I feel like it's fraud in some cases. I mean, uh, come on, same, same exact checklist for the, for the customer, the guest, the guest that paid the money to stay there and paid a cleaning fee as a cleaning lady. But that's besides the point. Look, I like private homes. I like traveling with friends. I like having that experience of, uh, I mean, it's all about the experience. I still think it's great value for money. I gotta figure out a way, heck, uh, you know, maybe invite a friend that stays for free and crashes in the couch and be like, hey, would you mind helping cleaning up towards the end? Cause you know, I, I understand I paid the cleaning fee, but like if you don't clean up, help me clean up, I'm gonna get charged extra money. And you know, I'm trying to do all the vacations like this. So I'm trying to work it out in my head that the cleaning fee is part of the thing. Nothing is gonna get cleaned. They're gonna look through your thing. Like if it's no smoking, it's mentioned a couple times. That's the reason, you know, like watching the, just the cleaning fee, cause they were all from the business owner's perspective. I understand the business owner is making the money. I understand what they're doing, but I completely disagree with the guy that's like, oh, hey, submit the report to Airbnb when a person throws a party. I mean, I guess you could, but at the same time for me, I was like, wow. You know, just like recording people, I, I like, but, it is their property and it's in, it maybe in the house rules, I guess they, they listed in the house rules, but, but, but it kind of becomes a moot point. Uh, let's say if I, if I put in the house rules that you must catch uh, somebody's child and uh, you know, I don't know, spank them or something, right? I mean, you can't do that. So, Here's what I think could be a great improvement to Airbnb because I, I like to point in towards the positive. I point out my experience, yes, but it was my karma to go through it. But at the same time, it was my karma to be able to share this video with you guys. Even if one person watches it, I don't care. I'll watch it. I mean, I'm having fun doing it. I'm making IZ reviews, not for like crazy profits and things like this. I made it as an outlet for me to have a voice out there on the internet to share my experience and give tips and tricks so that we can be as customers, as consumers. Call me a freaking consumer all you want. Fantastic, you know, I'm not gonna be offended by it. I do enjoy spending money into the economy, feeding the economy and enjoying people's wonderful houses that they spend tons of money on in the best locations. Really? I mean, can you get something better than private houses? I've traveled. I've stayed in five-star hotels. Those are fantastic, but so corporate. Very, very corporate. And the, the idea of renting entire houses, I kind of like it. So I'm gonna follow the rules. If they wanna, if they want money for me, extra cleaning fee, here you go. Do you want us? You do you want some more money on top of that? throw money at it because your feedback, your reputation might keep you from renting out that next amazing summer house. But by knowing it and accepting it in the first place and kind of like uh, maybe talking to owners about it, coming across with your perspective, maybe asking more questions. But if you are asking questions, 
um, you know, most laws, most states allow you to actually record the conversation that you're part of, uh, but some states don't. Um, but just at least for your knowledge and your memory, just do it, maybe, maybe record it if it's completely legal for you. I'm not giving you legal advice, but what, what I'm saying is that we have to protect ourselves. The Romans had a saying, it's called caveat emptor. The, the buyer beware. So that, that's why I'm putting out this video. I'm not, I'm not trying to rag on Airbnb. It's just when you assume things, you make an ass out of you and me. And I, you can't really assume anything. You have to do the best you can with the information you got. And I'm trying to share this. The cleaning fee is not a cleaning fee. It's part of the thing. You're signing up to the rules. But in some ways, actually, if you agree to the rules, you got to follow them. But there should be limitations. And you should be able to be like, hey, you know, I understand I'm breaking the rules. I just, I just can't help it. You want the hundred bucks? Here's the hundred bucks. That's from my experience. Because I would rather have, you know, kept that account and not had the negative reputation. Um, cause renting homes is important, but now it's actually c coming to, to my experience that if I could be a stellar guest and get a positive feedback, Hey, be like, Hey buddy, I stayed in your house. If you like how I cleaned up, leave me a positive so I could leave you a positive. So, so this way you get the positives from all the, you know, nice lake house properties you stayed in so that you get access to the most exclusive properties owned by human beings that like exist in the world. I mean, their house, their rules, it is what it is. So I hope you found this video informative and I do want to start a discussion because only through discussion and discussing the ideas and sharing our ideas and experiences in the comments below, um, can we actually make an improvement? Heck, make a video with your iPhone. This is what I'm doing. I'm just making a selfie video, walking around at seven o'clock in the morning, getting fresh air. And, cause I couldn't help but think about this. This is just like, I believe in fairness. I believe in, you know, value for money. It's still a good value for money. It just depends. It depends on the property. It depends on the rules and things like this. There's gotta be also a way maybe to hire your own cleaning lady on top of the thing. Like, so let's say the house rules clean up. Be like, hey, oh, tired of following house rules? We'll follow them for you. Search out the professional cleaning ladies. Heck, that lady, the, the professional cleaning lady that said, hey, no, no guests actually should have to put up with cleaning all the stuff up. I, I'm gonna find who she is. She's like, oh, we're professional cleaning services for Airbnb people. I feel like hiring her, her company. So I'm gonna look into it because the, the, that could be a service. Like, okay, the, the guest rules say this and I wanna enjoy myself and I paid money and I'll pay more money, just hire the service. You know, we, we, we gotta infuse the economy with money. You know, the, the country should get reopened up. This is right now like June 10th, 2020. You know, months have been uh, spent in basements, cowering in fear. Now it's time to enjoy the great outdoors, boost our immune systems with the great sun, enjoy a great steak, enjoy a great laugh, enjoy the, the, the great company of your friends and family members, whoever is close to you. You know, just share these experiences because I mean, they're fleeting. We have this moment. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery. But right now, is a is a gift that's why it's called the present all right guys i hope you have a good one and i hope you tell me about all the great experiences you have in the future knowing the rules and how to play the game all right my friends talk soon